thing like a pot or a cup or is there anything that you really like doing or is it just kind of whatever the thing i haven't done whatever i haven't done yet is the most attractive Hmm. um but um since i got into colored clay there are several uh things about it that i like a lot one thing is that no two pieces are the same because of the way that i lay out my patterns even though i'm working off of the same block like this blue turtle series that i'm doing right now because of the way i lay out my pieces there are rarely two pieces two individual pieces that look anything like each other you know they might the patterns might have a different orientation they might lay out on the piece differently whatever whatever um so um you talked about my name a lot so let, let me let me talk about that a little bit you know i said you know sort of my mission is to bring light you know to contribute in some way and that was definitely what I was about when I was doing family therapy, but I felt more selfish when I was doing pottery. I was just doing it because that's who I am and that's what I wanted to do. And if people liked it and would pay me for it, that's good enough for me. So um, when I started doing the colored clay, um, about five years in, I started getting good enough that people were starting to trip out on it. The beginning, the, beginning, the first five years, um, I, I was, I, I was just learning. I was just playing scales and learning chords, sort of, and um, and then I got to a point where I could actually do something that I thought was good, and people started responding to my work in a whole new way. And what I've been hearing for a while is that my work makes people happy. I, I had one. I had one customer that wrote a piece of feedback on on my Instagram page said, your work is happiness made solid, Mm. which I thought way cool. And then um, another person said just recently, um, it's color therapy. (laughs) Ah, Those are good ones. Yeah. And I was like, you know, it was very complimentary, but it was very rewarding because that's what I'm about. You know, I want, to contribute in some kind of way and artists artists have different missions hmm. you know and in ceramics there's some really weird ones you know people want to make a political statement they want to you know shock you you know they want to make a, a crocodile with a baby's head on it you know they want to make you know cups that are square they want to make you know pottery so unlimited you can do anything you want and uh, there's one woman who's got famous for, for making these oversized hand grenades uh, out of clay as a sort of a political statement, an anti-war statement or something. She said, she's freaking famous. I mean, great, more power to you. But, um, you know, I, I, when I teach people, I like to say, what's your mission as an artist? Hmm. You know, what, what do you want to communicate? Because art's a communication. And it's a nonverbal communication. People love to analyze it, but it's a nonverbal communication. And for me, because I have such a background in, in the healing arts, um, I, I'm very interested in what the emotional communication is. Mm. What is the feeling you get from looking at this? A lot of artists don't care about the emotional level. They're very intellectual. You know, they're like... Subjective, yeah. I, right. And th- there's definitely two camps. There's the intellectual camp, which mostly comes out of college programs, and um, because they're very intellectual in college programs, they gotta, you know, it's not enough just to make pretty stuff. You've got to analyze it, make a statement, you know, it's gotta, um, oh geez, they got all kind of jargon they use. It's just bullshit, (laughs) Um, you know, to try to enhance the value of their work. I have never gone anywhere near that world. You know, I've never done a gallery. I've never done a big gallery show. I've been in galleries like maybe twice in my whole career. Um, I've never uh, gotten a credential. I've never um, published. I haven't published any articles, although actually my first article about colored clay is coming out in a uh, Spanish ceramics magazine. In fact, I think it's out now. 
Good. Yeah, I may publish some more stuff about this because now I feel like bragging a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, a a anyway, it's that emotional communication that's important to me. And when I realized how people were responding to my work, I knew I had hit the biggest home run of my career mm -hmm. and it's the most rewarding and I felt like I was um, contributing the most that I'd ever been able to do with my work and that's that's friggin amazing to do something you love and have that kind of a payoff mm -hmm. you know it's really fun to be me right now I can tell you that <laughs> that's great you know, six, 68 years and uh, you know I've been poor my whole life. I've been obscure my whole life, and um, all of a sudden, I, all of a sudden, I'm a rock star. You know, <laughs> I got that video got 40 million followers. Wow. I got, I don't know, I got, I don't know, almost 50 million followers on, uh, or 50,000 followers. Sorry, 50,000 <laughs> followers on Instagram. Uh, everybody with 50 million I, followers I on Instagram. <laughs> Yeah, and it keeps it keeps notching up too. I don't see the momentum slowing down at all. Good. So, all right. So, where can people connect with you online? <laughs> As you already said, you have the Instagram. I get that a lot. Yeah. You mean like, where can people buy my work? Hey, that's one way too. Well, you have the website, which is. Um, I have I have a website, lightwavepottery.com. Yep. I'm on Instagram at lightwavepottery. Um, and, uh, you can follow me and look at my stuff, uh, there, but, um, I sell most of my work from my studio on Kauai and, uh, periodically now I'm getting my production up to a point where I can sell online. I just did an Etsy sale last weekend. Um, Congrats. and, um, there are a lot of people that want to buy my work right now. It's ridiculous. You know, yeah. I've got 14,000 people on my mailing list that wish they could buy some. Wow. And, um, and growing, as I said. Anyway, right. so um, when that video went viral, I sold four months worth of work in a week, and I didn't have anything <laughs> left in my, in my shop. I didn't have a single piece of colored clay in my shop. Oh, my goodness. And, oh. I hustled and I got people coming in all the time because all these tourists on the island are getting calls from the mainland from their kids or whoever. Saying, you got to go buy some mm -hmm. of this guy's stuff. Check it out. It's amazing. And uh, so then I hustled and I got another firing out in about two weeks. And then I had people coming in the door and I didn't have anything to sell them. I, I was working by myself. Yeah. And, you know, and then I'm trying to get more work made and they want to talk to me. And uh, somehow I navigated through that one. And, um, I got another firing out about 200 pieces or something and I, so, I sold that in a week and then, and then I really had nothing. I had nothing in process. I had nothing in the showroom and people were lining up out the door. So Ooh. I started hiring people, um, former students and, and other uh, ceramic artists on the island that I knew. And I, I put together a team. I have four people working for me now Good. and, um, and it's the the traffic in the studio has slowed down some, but um, I've had I've had people fly over from Texas and Oahu and California and stuff just to come to my studio, which is like crazy. I'm like, oh well, this is the only way they can get my work because my my online sales I haven't been able to produce enough work to to sell any more than what's going out the door at my mm -hmm. shop and. You know, why go to the hassle of doing an online sale? But um, but I want I don't want to ignore that that market. So um, so I've done I think I've done maybe four sales online in the last uh, ten months. No, it's actually not actually not too bad. But the last one I did I had. On Etsy, I had 20 pieces and it sold out in five minutes. So, wow. Um, Way to go. So, so yeah. So upwards. That's the, that's the landscape that I'm, I'm living in right now. So if people want, if, if people want to follow me, they can, if they want to buy some of the, some of my work, um, I send out announcements. I have a mailing list they can sign up for off my website or off of Instagram. 
and um, I send out announcements when I'm going to sell online. And um, I either do Etsy or eBay. I figure Etsy's first come, first serve. And so you got to be, you know, plugged into your computer at the time when it goes up. And um, some people can't. And then eBay is goes to the highest bidder. So right. people have time to where they can throw down a bid or two if they want. And, you know, it, it's a different process. It's the best I've been able to come up with so far because I can't, I can't nearly meet the market that I have now. And I'm old, man. I should be <laughs> retired or something, you know? <laughs> Uh, he's doing his art. He's doing art. He's bringing light into the world, which is important. Yeah, and and you know, artists never quit. Anyway, most artists no. die with a fish in their hand. I'll be lying on my deathbed. One more, yeah. Okay, and one final question: Why does art matter? Well, um, <laughs> depends on the art. <laughs> <laughs> art that doesn't matter to me at all but um art uh art when it's good or when it communicates something valuable um is a way of appreciating the best things about being a human you know the beauty and the, the um appreciation of of life and it, it's it's visual food you know like why does music matter you know music matters because it uplifts us hopefully unless you're into death metal or something <laughs> but it gives us an emotional experience that we like and we like you know, we we need that we need to have you know that kind of communication and you know art that touches people i think um is is a gift to the world and uh, I'm lucky I'm in an art form where my pieces are going to, you know, they don't get broken the last 10,000 years. And so, you know, I've done something that most of them will get broken, but a few won't. And long after I'm gone, there will be a few pieces of my work rattling around in somebody's closet or buried in the yard in some archaeological dig that somebody digs up or something. And, um, we can hope. <laughs> yeah. Um, maybe if I get really famous, it'll be in museums and stuff, and people will treasure <laughs> them and like, take really good care of them. It but, is possible. Um, I like making coffee cups, you know. I make coffee cups because everybody wants coffee cups, so it's a good marketing thing. But the thing is, people handle them every day. You know, if you make a vase, it sits on the shelf. But if you make a coffee cup and people use it, now people are going, oh, your work's too valuable to use. I go, use it, you know, because you get to touch it and look at it every day. Drink your morning coffee out of it. It'll mm. give you, a, it'll give you a, a, a lift in the morning, you know. So that's, that's why I think it's important. It's a way of affirming life, you know. Mm. Great answer. Okay. I want to thank you so much. It's been a blast. Thank you for coming to... The Artist Matters Podcast, Dean, and I wish you more success in light wave pottery Thank and beyond. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Isn't that a good one? Art is a way of affirming life. Ah, I love that one. And what else do we get from Dean's story? Well, obviously the intricacies of clay, it's a lot more than you think. There's so much involved. I couldn't believe that just water from one end of the island in Kauai was completely different from the other end, and that made a difference in what he produced. But this is a testament to his perseverance and his craft. As he said, he may not have been a great artist at the beginning, but he's always been a good problem solver. And that does help us. We reach those moments where we kind of hit a wall. Writer's block is one of them. Or sometimes it's just not working. But you work through it. You solve the problem. And another thing he highlights is that intermittent reward. Knowing sometimes that we run into obstacles, hitting a wall, writer's block, etc., and etc. But there's that one moment where everything just clicks. And you turn out a good drawing 
or you hit your nose.